Now the question is, if this is C1 and this is C2, on which carbon should water attack? If water attacks on C1, this mercury and this acetate together will come on C2. If water attacks on C2, this mercury and acetate together would come on C1. Now, there is no formation of carbocation here. Because suppose, suppose water attacks on C1. What we would have is this water, lone pair of water gets into the orbital of this carbon. So this carbon has to break a bond. Carbon will break this bond because on breaking this bond, electron goes to mercury and mercury gets neutralized. So if carbon is gaining electron of this oxygen, it will break this bond. And when this bond gets broken, then the plus charge of mercury vanishes because the electron of that bond come to orbital of mercury. So what we have is this kind of structure. Fine. Now there is no carbocation formed based on that. We so that we can based upon the stability of carbocation, we can judge on which carbon the oxygen will attack. But this is a neutral molecule, and this this hydrogen will come off just like that, as I have told you before. Now here here on which carbon oxygen will attack, we will judge depending upon the stability of the product of this particular reaction, and that stability will come from hindrance because mercury is a big atom. And uh, attached with acetate makes it even bigger. Now on this carbon, we have R group. This uh, is, this would generally be a larger group. And on the same carbon, if we have two large groups, there would be lots of hindrance on this carbon. And this small little poor carbon will not be able to have two large groups pulling each other. This is carbon and this is mercury acetate. And here you have R group. So there will be lots of hindrance and since the carbon is very small, the gap between these two groups would be very less. And this hindrance will make it highly unstable for a tiny little carbon to hold two bulky groups. So what we would try to do is, we will try to bring this HGOC on this carbon, so that R and this big group do not come on the same carbon. So this is the idea behind this reaction. So oxygen will not attack on C1. Oxygen will attack on C2 so that this mercuric acetate goes on C1. Why? Because of stability coming from lesser steric hindrance. This is the idea of this reaction and this is the reason why OH group comes on C2 showing Markov-Nikoff addition without rearrangement. So to show that this water, this, this o OH will come on C2, there will be a charge on oxygen that would be removed by blowing off H plus. So I'm not going to show those baby steps now. We are grown up and I'll I'll bypass trivial steps from now. This is what we will get. Fine. So this is oxymercuration. We have added OH group and we have added mercuric group. So this oxymercuric mercuration part of this reaction is complete. Now this mercuric acetate and water has shown their reaction. Now we have a neutral compound and here if you see this carbon has two hydrogens and this R group is not attached on this carbon. So here the hindrance because of this mercuric acetate part is less relative to this carbon. On this carbon you had R and mercuric acetate on the same carbon. So this brought, brings about stability by adding mercuric acetate on terminal carbon. right? So regioselectively this OH will get attached to second carbon and that will give us Markov-Nikoff addition without rearrangement. Fine. Now what we do is we add uh, sodium borohydride and we remove off this mercuric acetate. Now sodium borohydride I haven't taught you in detail how the reaction proceeds but what I have tell you, told you before and what I'm telling you again is sodium borohydride like lithium aluminium hydride is a hydride generator. You, when you see sodium borohydride, you have to see, feel it as a hydride generator. All it does is, it generates hydride ion in the system in a controlled fashion. Now it is different than sodium hydride. When you add sodium hydride in a system, Na plus H minus, this H minus is free. This is not in a form of complex. This sodium Na plus ion do not give enough attraction in the system after ionization. So the reaction is violent. Sodium borohydride produces hydride ion in a controlled fashion. 
Reaction is a little complex. We'll study sodium borohydride and lithium aluminum hydride in our chapter carbonyl compound. Here for now, it would be sufficient for you to know that sodium borohydride is a hydride generator. Now, once it has generated hydride, this is a living group here. But that hydride can show a SN2 reaction, can show a backside attack, attack on this carbon, get attached to this carbon, throwing out this mercuric acetate part. So when we do that, we have a hydrogen attached here and mercuric acetate part coming out. So what we have effectively is, we have got an alcohol. We have done addition of water, HOH effectively, in Markonef Asper, in concurrence with Markonef Koff rule, but without rearrangement. We have to choose between C1 and C2, and we have chosen C2 for the addition of OH. That means OH has been added to a more substituted carbon as per the Markonef Koff rule. Among the two, it has been added to the more substituted carbon. And why that happened, we understand from here. Because when OH gets added to more substituted, this mercuric acetate part comes out to terminal carbon, reducing the hindrance. That's why it has been. But nevertheless, OH has been added to the second carbon, to the more substituted carbon. And this is in concurrence with Markonef Koff rule. So we say that we have got a Markonef Koff product without rearrangement. So this is oxymercuration and this part of removal of mercuric ion was demercuration. So first we have oxymercuration and then we have demercuration that gives us this alcohol. Hence the name of the reaction oxymercuration demercuration. Fine. So this is uh, what the reaction is. First let's study the next reaction and then we will solve some problems.